Here's how to easily pass a prop from challenge, and I mean legitimately pass one, not YOLOing a prop from account and hoping to pass it that way. 60% of the time, it works every time. This is my current 150k challenge with Apex Trader funding that I'm currently taking at the time of this video. But as you can see, I already met my profit goal of 9,000 in two days. Now I'm simply trading micros to fulfill the trading day requirement of seven days in order to officially pass. And I did this by using my trading strategy, which I'll talk about in a minute. But more importantly, I did it by being aware of my risk to reward ratio. My risk to reward ratio when it came to this specific evaluation was four to one. Now, I understand how many ticks for any given trade is required to achieve that ratio. And it certainly may seem like wishful thinking to a lot of people but not if I'm trading off a longer time frame, and certainly not when I'm respecting my strategy, which has strict support and resistance levels that need to be followed in order to have a tight stop loss and achievable price targets. It's all about perspective. I decided to risk $500 for every trade to aim for $2,000. That was about a 0.03 to a 0.04% of the total account, but that's irrelevant because the only thing that matters when trying to pass an evaluation to get funded is what's the drawdown and what's the profit goal. The profit goal was $9,000 and the drawdown was $5,000. So a $500 risk is 10% of the total drawdown. And that gave me about 10 trades that I could afford to lose before I failed the evaluation. For me, that number was perfectly sufficient just based on how well my strategy has done for me historically. Because based on my four to one risk to reward ratio, I just needed a couple of those trades to go in my favor to meet the profit goal and they did. And it only took me two days. Regardless if I need to call an audible due to it looking like the price action is about to fall short of my price target or the trading day is about to end since you can only day trade with a prop account. I'll cut the trade short and settle for a 3 to 1 ratio or a 2 to 1 ratio instead of 4 to 1. As long as I get my 10 affordable trades, um, that's all that matters. But if you feel like 10 trades is not enough, here's a table breakdown of what percent of the drawdown you can risk and how many allowable losing trades that would give you before the drawdown ultimately gets triggered and you fill the account. So always respect the number you're comfortable with and trade accordingly to reach your goal of passing. But patience is a huge factor when it comes to all of this, and that's exactly what was practiced when I used my strategy to pass this evaluation, which we're now about to get to. I took four total trades that consisted of the NASDAQ, S&P 500 futures, crude oil, and natural gas to pass the evaluation. But for the purpose of keeping this video short and concise, we're going to focus on natural gas and explaining the strategy. So what you're seeing here is a four hour chart of natural gas futures, and we're going to focus around this area and ignore everything forward because this first week of October was when I was trading the evaluation. So the first thing I need to establish or needed to establish when it came to any of the indexes or commodities that I traded was, am I bear bias or am I bull bias? And the way to determine that is through the Ichimoku cloud indicator. So if you have thinkorswim, you simply go to the studies button and you search for Ichimoku cloud, hit apply and then okay. So at first glance, it looks like someone just threw up all over your chart and it looks unattractive, but bear with me. This will be a lot easier to understand once I explain it. So these red and gold visuals right here represent the cloud of the Ichimoku cloud study. And the only thing you need to know in order to first establish whether you're going to be bullish or bearish is where is the current price action. If it's below the cloud, you're going to focus on taking a short trade. If it's above the cloud, you're going to focus on taking a long trade. There are always exceptions, but that's generally the blueprint of the strategy. And you always do this on a four hour chart, nothing less, because then it starts becoming unreliable. But don't go short on a trade right when it crosses below the cloud, or don't go long on a trade right when it crosses above the cloud. There are a couple more things that need to happen in order to ensure the probability of your trade being successful. Really make sure the price action has cleared the cloud and there is enough distance between the cloud and the price action. You don't actually want to be in or near the clouds. Secondly, make sure this blue line right here, which is called the 10 Ken line, has crossed above this pink line, which is the kitchen line. Vice versa, if you're going short and price action has cleared below the clouds, make sure the blue 10 Ken line has crossed below the pink kitchen line. But let's go back to our specific trade that we did for the evaluation. Once price action was above the clouds and once the 10 Ken line crossed above the kitchen line, we get ready for a trade. But we need to establish two more things for a precision entry so that way we can establish our four to one risk to reward ratio by having a proper stop loss and having a proper price target. And those two things are trend lines and a proper Fibonacci retracement for confluence. And what I mean by confluence is where a trend line meets an important level on the Fibonacci retracement. So then we would have two strong indicators validating our bias for a bullish trade. But before we get to the trend lines and Fibonacci retracement, let's quickly talk about the red line right here, which is also part of the Ichimoku cloud study. This red line is called the Chiku line. And basically, it's there to help guide you of when to get out of a trade. Once the Ichimoku cloud meets price action, meaning the line starts touching the candlesticks, it generally means there's a good chance the price is about to reverse. 
Now this line is always delayed in comparison to the current price action. So you notice when it did start touching price action around here, it was during the last few current trading days. And what happened? Natural gas started going down. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I just wanted to show you that to illustrate a point. Let's put ourselves back to when we traded this, which was around the 5th of October right here. Now that we've established we're going to be long bias, let's get rid of the Ichimoku study just so we can have a cleaner chart. And that way it'll be easier to draw trend lines and Fibonacci retracement. Because the whole purpose of the Ichimoku cloud was to know where the trend is going. And we already established it's going to be up. So at least for now, I don't need this study. But I'll certainly pull it back up to check on the Chiku line and see how close it's getting to the price action candlesticks. And that'll be one of the key signs to get out of the trade. So let's draw out our trend lines. And again, we're going to be doing this on the 4-hour chart. The first trend line I drew was from here to here. And this is a bearish trend line. So if we do have a candlestick close above it, the price action was very bullish. Let's draw out another trend line from this point to this area right here. See how we have multiple points now bouncing off this trend line? This is our bullish trend line, so let's color it blue. If we have a candlestick close below this trend line, price action is bearish. So now let's draw out our Fibonacci retracement. Typically, I look for the low of price action and draw it out to the high of price action, which again at the time was this candlestick right here. Now, typically, I wait for price action to get to the 50% retracement, which is this orange level right here, or the 61.8% retracement, which is this solid purple line, or even the 78.6% level, which is this dotted purple line. I consider these three levels the golden pockets of a reversal and would typically love for the price action to come down here. Typically, uh, in this case, I noticed this four hour candlestick bounced off this 38.2% retracement. So I started thinking, okay, is this considered the pullback and will price action start running again? Or will it go down further to either one of those three golden pockets? Well, remember when I talked about confluence, this is where this bullish trend line came into play. I realized if we were to come down to either one of these three levels, most likely we were going to close below this trend line and that's a bearish signal. Whereas bouncing off this 38.2% retracement and this blue trend line was very bullish to me, especially, and this is the key thing here, especially since we already had our Ichimoku study confirm the bias was bullish. And these extra confluences are telling us this is where our entry should be. So I decided that is where I was going to take my trade. And I did that by switching over to a shorter time frame, a 15 minute time frame. So let's switch over to that. Let's zoom in. And this is where price action was. And you see how we're flirting with this bullish trend line. So what I did was draw another Fibonacci retracement from this low to this high, which was the high at the time. And you could perfectly see how this candlestick bounced off the 78.6% retracement. So once it closed, my entry was the next candlestick around here. I bought two contracts. Let's switch back over to the 180 day 4 hour chart. And zoom in again. I'll get rid of this extra Fibonacci since you guys can see things more clearly. Once I was in, my stop loss was going to be around this 50% retracement which would be around the $500 I was risking for my 4 to 1 ratio and my price target would be this 23.6% retracement, which is this blue line, and a very popular line at that for price action to go to when you're using the Fibonacci retracement properly. And as you can see, we hit that level plus more. Additionally, let's put our Ichimoku study back onto the charts. You can see the Chiku line is far, far away from the current price action. So if I wanted to hold on to these contracts longer, there was a great chance it was going to the 61.8% retracement. Again, just based on how far this Chiku line was from price action, and it very well did, plus more. But one of the key things in the stock market is to never be greedy and take what the market gives you because the longer your exposure in the markets, the higher your risk. I had to learn that uh, the hard way many, many times. But this was about a $3,000 trade, so I was already a third of the way there in passing my evaluation. I later took some trades in crude oil, the NASDAQ, and the ES, and I met the 9K goal on the second day using the exact same strategy I showed you guys here. So that basically does it for this video. Uh, I do also want to mention, if you guys are interested in taking an evaluation with Apex Trader Funding, 
I have a discount code and an affiliate link you can use in the description down below. It helps supports me and this channel. I did another video prior to this one talking about Apex and three other prop firms and I broke down a comparison chart of what different things each of them have to offer so that video may help your decision on which prop firm company you want to take an evaluation with. I'll have an affiliate link and discount codes for them as well down below but those companies are 1UP Trader, Top Step, and Trade Day. But anyways, that'll do it for this video. If you found this content useful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos. I sincerely appreciate you for watching. Good luck in the markets and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.